and welcome or welcome back to Sweet Hister Tea. Today, I will be taking a look at the 1997 animated film Anastasia, created by the legendary Don Bluth and Gary Oldman. The movie is very loosely based on the real-life mystery of what happened to Grand Duchess Anastasia Romanoff after the death of her family in 1918. The story follows the 18-year-old Anastasia, or Anya, voiced by Meg Ryan, as she journeys with the two conmen, Dmitri and Vladimir, voiced by John Cossack and Kelsey Grammer respectively, as they journey to Paris to see the Dowager Empress Maria Fyodorovna, voiced by Angela Lansbury. This movie was also the first movie made for 20th Century Fox Animation Division, according to IMDb. Now that we've taken a brief look at the plot of the movie, let's dive down into the history. The movie starts in the year 1916 according to the narration provided by the Dowager Empress. She states that 1916 was the 300th anniversary of Romanov rule in Russia, but this is not accurate. The first Romanov Tsar, Michael Romanov, became Tsar in 1613, not 1616. The fashion that the courtiers are wearing is also not 100% accurate for this sort of event. The fashion resembles the boyars who were ancient Russian nobility, but this style of clothing was prohibited by Tsar Peter the Great. There was a ball in 1903 where Tsar Nicholas and his wife Alexandra, alongside their guests, are dressed in traditional boyar clothing, but this event was dubbed a costume ball. A more accurate style of dress for a Russian ball during the 1910s would be full-on evening dress, with some men even in military uniforms. The picture that Anastasia gives to her grandmother of the little girl was an actual portrait that Anastasia did in real life. Later on in the film, Anastasia says that Olga claimed the picture looked like a donkey riding a pig. This is an accurate statement. Anastasia wrote a letter to her father Nicholas, and she wrote what her older sister Olga had said about her picture. The Dowager Empress also gave Anastasia a music box in real life, but it looked very different to the one in the movie. The real music box was given to Anastasia on her 13th birthday, and was silver with a ballerina on top rather than gold. Later, when Rasputin interrupts the ball, the Dowager Empress says that we thought he was a holy man, but he was a fraud. This is accurate. Rasputin, while claiming to be a mystic and a monk, actually had a wife and three children back in his home village. Many members of the Romanov family did not approve of Rasputin due to his inappropriate behavior, which is often marked with sexual predator allegations but Tsar Nicholas would not send away Rasputin. The reason the Tsar would not send Rasputin away is because his wife Alexandra believed that Rasputin was actively healing the hemophilia of their son, Tsarevich Alexei. Rasputin then places a curse on the Romanov family in the movie, saying that the family will die in a fortnight, which is roughly two weeks. In reality, the Tsar and his family died in 1918, not 1916. The scene where Anastasia and the Dowager Empress attempt to leave the palace following a siege is also not entirely accurate. In 1916, Anastasia was a girl of 15, but in the movie she is 8 years old, making her much younger. She would visit war hospitals with her sisters and mother, and play games with the soldiers to help raise their spirits. As for the Dowager Empress, she did not leave Russia until 1919. After she left Russia, she resided in the UK where her sister, Queen Alexandra, was the wife of King Edward VII. The scene where Rasputin drowns in the river is also not accurate. Rasputin was eliminated by a group of nobles led by Prince Felix Yusupov, the nephew-in-law of Tsar Nicholas II. His body was found in the river, but his cause of death was actually a bullet wound to the head. The following scene begins with the song, There's a Rumor in St. Petersburg, with the year now being 1926. Calling the city St. Petersburg, however, is not accurate. The city was known as Petrograd from 1914 to 1924, and then Leningrad from 1924 to 1991. The townsfolk sing that there is a rumor that, although the Tsar did not survive, one daughter may be still alive, that being Anastasia. Two con men, Dmitri and Vladimir, explain that they are having auditions to hire a girl that resembles Anastasia so they can take the reward money from the Dowager Empress. 
In reality, many young women tried to claim that they were the lost Grand Duchess. The most well-known example was a Polish woman named Anna Anderson. She claimed for decades that she was Anastasia, but DNA evidence revealed that she was, in fact, not a member of the Russian imperial family. After the song ends, we finally find out what happened to Anastasia after she failed to catch the train with her grandmother at the beginning of the movie. For the last decade, she was living in an orphanage, with the only clue to her past being a necklace that says, Together in Paris. Her name during this time in the orphanage is also Anya. This also might be a slight nitpick, but one thing I've noticed is that people saw Anastasia fall off the train and the Dowager Empress trying to catch her. So couldn't she be held in a hospital and then sent off to live with her grandmother? During the song, Journey to the Past, Anya makes her way to St. Petersburg hoping to purchase a ticket to Paris with her dog Puka. The Soviet guard dismisses her after Anya reveals she doesn't have an exit visa. An elderly woman advises Anya to go to the abandoned palace and to look for a man named Dmitri so that she can get the travel papers she needs to leave the country. While Anya explores the abandoned palace, the famous song, Once Upon a December, begins. Her older sisters, Olga, Tatiana, and Maria, give Anya a necklace that transforms her rags into a beautiful court dress. The real Grand Duchess wore a similar style of dress in her younger years. The song ends with Nicholas dancing with his adult daughter and giving her a kiss on the forehead. Although this scene never happened in real life, it is very touching, especially with the fluid and beautiful 2D animation. Dimitri finds Anya in the ballroom and asks her why she is in the abandoned palace to begin with. Anya explains that she was told to go there to acquire travel papers. Dimitri realizes that Anya looks very similar to Grand Duchess Anastasia. Quick to his scheme, he tries to convince Anya to go with him and Vladimir so that Anya may be able to find her family. Anya thinks Dimitri is crazy and that there's no way she could ever be the real Anastasia, but eventually agrees to his deal. The vial that Rasputin used to curse the family at the beginning of the movie also sparks to life, knowing that Anya is in fact Anastasia. It quickly travels to what appears to be purgatory to reunite with Rasputin. Anya, Dmitri, and Vlad are on a train leaving Russia. As the Soviet guard begins checking the passengers' passports, Vlad notices that his are in blue when they are supposed to be in red. I was able to find a passport from 1929 where the details are in blue, but I could not find a passport from 1926 with red ink inside it. The trio make their way to the baggage car of the train to avoid the Soviet guards, and this is where Rasputin attempts his plan to eliminate Anastasia. This plan fails, and the group are able to continue on their journey to Paris. On the trip to Paris, Vladimir begins teaching Anya about the Romanov family tree and the past of the family. The song, Learn to Do It, begins, and most of the lyrics are accurate to the life of the real Anastasia. Vlad sings the line, You were born in a palace by the sea. Anastasia was born at the Peterhof Palace on June 18, 1901. If we look at the palace with a bird's eye view, there is water near it. The palace sits directly on the Gulf of Finland. The line, you rode horseback when you were only three, is partially accurate. There are photographs from 1909 when Anastasia was eight years old showing her on horseback, but I couldn't find any sources that described her riding as young as three. The following lyric, You Made Faces and Terrorized the Cook, is referencing the real-life Anastasia's personality. She was always pulling pranks and making jokes with her family and the palace staff. As for the people listed in the song, some of them are real and others are made up. One name mentioned in the song, Kropotkin, could be a reference to Peter Kropotkin, a Russian geographer. However, the following line contradicts this by saying he shot Potemkin. The only notable Potemkin in Russian history is the former lover of Catherine the Great, Gregory Potemkin. He was not shot and he died from an illness. The Uncle Vanya in the song could be a reference to a Russian play of the same name from 1898. There was also a Count Antoli, but he wasn't a Romanov. The rest of the names mentioned in the song do not match real-life Romanov family members. 
The trio reach Paris and meet the cousin of the Dowager Empress named Sophie, who is staying with her. While Sophie is a fun character, I could not find any proof that this was a real person, and she was only made for the movie. Sophie interviews Anya moments after turning away another girl claiming to be Anastasia, one of thousands. Anya passes the test, but she says something that proves her identity as Anastasia. The night of the siege, Dmitri was the one who rescued the Dowager Empress and Anastasia from the Soviets by opening a hidden passage in the wall. Sophie explains that the Dowager Empress does not wish to see any more girls claiming to be Anastasia, but she is also convinced Anya is the real deal. Sophie makes a remark that she and the Dowager Empress never miss the Russian ballet. At the ballet, Anya prays that the Empress remembers who she is. After the show, Dimitri tries to speak to the Dowager Empress, but she does not wish to see him. She knows that he is a conman from Russia that was holding auditions in order to find a girl that looked like Anastasia. Anya, listening to the whole conversation, smacks Dimitri, when she finds out she was originally part of his con to trick an elderly and grieving woman. Desperate for the Dowager Empress and Anya to reunite, Dimitri kidnaps the Empress and takes her to the hotel where Anya is staying. She refuses to go inside, but Dimitri gives the Empress the music box that once belonged to her granddaughter. Busy packing her belongings, Anya believes the knock at the door is Dimitri. Upon realizing it is the Empress, she apologizes. As the conversation between the Dowager Empress and Anya continue, Anya regains her memories of her childhood with her family. The next day, the Empress offers Dimitri his reward money, but he refuses it, saying that he's had a change of heart. At a party celebrating her return, Anya leaves to find her dog Puka. The dress she is wearing looks similar to the one that Olga wore as a young woman. Anya makes her way to Pont Alexander III, a bridge in France named after her grandfather, Tsar Alexander III. Rasputin traps Anya on the bridge, hoping that she will fall into the water and drown. Dimitri appears and attempts to save Anya, but he is overpowered by Rasputin's magic. The vial that Rasputin used to curse the Romanovs comes loose in the struggle, and Anya crushes it under her heel, ending Rasputin forever. After the conflict, Anya writes a letter to her grandmother explaining that she and Dimitri have eloped and that the two of them will see each other again soon. Some of the pictures in the room are actual Romanov family photographs, such as this photo on the back table of Empress Alexandra and her son Alexei. At the end of the movie, Dimitri and Anastasia dance on a ship and embrace each other. The movie fades to black, and the credits roll. Thank you everyone for watching. I had a lot of fun making this video and it was really interesting to see how much the movie got right about the real life Anastasia. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and if you enjoy history or gaming content, please subscribe to Sweet History Tea, a channel full of random facts and lots of sparkles. If you would like to see more of my hobbies and everyday life, please consider following me on Instagram. If you have an idea for a video, there is a link down below in the description where you can submit your ideas. Thank you again for watching, and until next time!